Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the determination of transfer function of the non-interacting control system. Now all of you know that what is non-interacting multi-capacity control system. Very first we know that multi-capacity system is that system in which there is a flow of mass or the energy through the series of two or more first order control system. And what is non-interacting first order control system that you know that as shown in the figure is the output of the tag number two does not affect the head in the tag number one then it is called as the non-interacting multi-capacity control system or you can say that head in both the tags are independent to each other. Now let us see before determination of the transfer we, we are very much curious about to determine what is the transfer function of the non-interacting first order control system. We know that the transfer function of the first order control system is y of s divided by x of s is equal to some constant divided by 1 upon 1 plus tau s or 1 upon 1 plus tau s. But what is the transfer function if these first order control systems are arranged in the series and that they are to be in non-interacting manner that we want to determine right now. So let us see for that purpose consider this figure consider that these, these two tags are arranged in non-interacting manner. Consider that Q0 is the inlet flow rate to the tag number 1 which is upper tank and the tag number 2 which is the lower tank. Consider Q0 is the inlet flow rate to the tag number 1 due to which head H1 is generated in the tag number 1. Consider A1 is the area of the tag number 1. Consider R1 is the resistance of the tag number 1 to the flow and the outlet of the tag number 1 we consider as a Q1. Now this Q1 enters into the tank number 2 through the atmosphere in the tank number 2 due to which the head which is generated in the tank number 2 is H2 and area of the tank number 2 is A2 and consider that Q2 is the outlet flow rate of the tank number 2. So before solving this derivation we have to consider few assumptions. So very first assumption for this what I consider I will consider that the liquid in the tank is incompressible or in short the density of the liquid is constant. The second assumption I will consider as let us consider that area of the tank both the tanks A1 is equal to A2 and the third assumption that I will consider is that the flow resistance is linear in nature or you can say that what do you mean by the, uh, the, according to the relationship you can write that that the outlet flow rate you are getting that is Q0 is equal to H by R or Q is equal to H by R this is the linear relationship so these are the three assumptions we have to consider before solving this derivation now we will, uh, we will solve this derivation step by step. Very first I will consider the upper tank. Now all of you aware that whenever we want to determine the transfer function of the system, very first we have to analyze the system that what is happening in this system. Whether the energy is getting transferred or whether the mass is getting transferred. So here you can see that here we have to take simply the mass balance because Q0 is the inlet flow rate and Q1 is the outlet flow rate and this is the accumulation in this tank that is area multiplied by head but this head is changing with respect to time. So just concentrate on the derivation now. Before solving consider the tank number 1. So what I will consider taking the material balance, taking the material balance for the upper tank. So where I will take the material balance for the upper tank, I know that input minus output is equal to rate of accumulation with respect to time. So Q0 minus Q1 is equal to A1 that is the area of the tank number 1 into J in the head with respect to time that I will mention as a dh1 by dt. So this is the major equation that is Q0 minus Q1 is equal to A1 into dh1 by dt that is the half of the work is done only by this equation. This is the simple material balance that I have taken for the upper tank. Now solving this before solving this, what I will consider, I am assuming the linear resistance that I have considered in my assumption. So I will consider that consider Q1 is equal to H1 by R1. So consider that Q1 is equal to H1 by R1. So R1 into Q1 is equal to H1. Then I will differentiate it with respect to time. I will get R1 is into dq1 by dt is equal to dh1 by dt. And this is my equation number 2. What I will do, I will put this equation number 2 into this equation number 1. So, what I will get here? Q0 minus Q1 is equal to A1. So, in spite of dh1 by dt, I will put R1 into dq1 by dt. So, I am getting here A1 into R1 into dq1 by dt. This is my equation number 3. Now, all of you know that step by step when we solve the derivation, we have to assume steady state after uh, uh, we solving the derivation. 
so this equation number 3 is the final form of the material balance actually so now i will consider at time t tends to infinity the steady state is achieved in the upper time so i uh, consider the steady state of equation number 3 we know that at steady state the outlet flow rate will be q0 of s that is the steady state outlet flow rate minus q1 is the steady state inlet flow rate is equal to a1 r1 into d2 1 by dt at steady state is constant so the other part of that i will consider it as a zero consider that this is equation number 4 this is my equation number 4 now what is the next step we know that the next step is nothing but subtraction of equation number 3 uh, equation number 4 from equation number 3 what i will do i will subtract this equation from this equation and i will get here equation 3 minus equation 4 i am getting here q0 minus q0 of s minus q1 minus q1 of s is equal to a1 r1 into d by dt of i will also assume here the steady state that is dq1 minus uh, q, q1 minus q1 of s this is my equation number 5 remember this is the most important equation this equation i have got after subtracting equation number 4 from equation number 3 so now, right now I will introduce my deviation variable. Now what do you mean by deviation variable? Deviation variable is a simply subtract, the deviation variable is nothing but the subtraction between q0 minus q0 of s. Or you can say that subtraction from the actual value to the steady state value. Or you can say that how much the variable is away from its steady state. So we know that the deviation variable q0 minus q0 of s, I will term it as a q0 and q1 minus q1 of s is equal to q1. So I will put this deviation variable, this equation number 5, this equation number 5 in this put, I will put this equation into equation number 5. So I am putting here what I will get, after putting this I will get here capital Q0, Q0 minus Q0 of S is capital Q0 minus Q1 minus Q1 of S is the capital Q1 is equal to A1 R1 into D by dt of capital Q1 or DQ1 by dt. This is your equation number 4 is the most important equation. How I have got this equation? But just by putting the equation variable. Now I know that A1 into R1. A1 is the capacitance of the term and R1 is the resistance. So in short, we know that the definition of the time constant is multiplication of capacitance into resistance. So this A1 into R1 has a unit of time. So and time is nothing but the time constant here. So I will put here A1 into R1 is equal to time constant tau 1. So finally I will get Q0 minus Q1, Q0 minus Q1 is equal to tau 1 into dq1 by dt. It seems appear to be the first order differential equation. So I am getting clue that the um, transfer function of the upper time is supposed to be become as a first order as a first order control system. So equation number 7 is q0 minus q1 is equal to tau 1 into dq1 by dt. Further, further solving this derivation, I have to take the Laplace transform of the equation number 7. The equation number 7, Laplace transform gives us taking Laplace transform of equation number 7. So Laplace transform of q0 is the q0 of s, Laplace transform of q1 is the q1 of s and Laplace transform of tau 1 is constant, Laplace transform of dq1 by dt is equal to s into q1 of s. So further taking q1 of s common, so q0 of s is equal to q1 of s into 1 plus tau 1 of s. So writing this particular equation into the transfer function form, that is the Laplace transform of output deviation variable to the Laplace transform of input deviation variable, that is equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 1 of s. So this seems to be the first order differential equation, the first order control system. So you can say that the transfer function of the upper tag is nothing but the first order control system. Now we have to solve this for the lower. Usually we are taking the material balance for the lower tag. So let us consider this is the lower tag. What is the input to the lower tag? It is the Q1 and what is the output of the lower tag? is Q2. And what is the head generated in the tag number 2? is H2 and area of the tag number 2 is A2. So what I will do? I will take the material balance for the lower tag. So input minus output is equal to rate of accumulation. So input is Q1 minus output is Q2 is equal to rate of accumulation multiplied. It means area and the head which is changing with respect to height. So head is H2. So A2 is to H2 by dt. Equation number 9. Remember, this equation is the most important equation because this is the start of the derivation for the time, lower time. So Q1 minus Q2 is equal to A2 into D H2 by dt. Equation number 9. And then you have to follow the same procedure as you have followed in the uh, up for the upper time. 
so as you will hear the resistance is so q2 is equal to h2 by r2 therefore r2 into q2 r2 into q2 is equal to h2 or you can say that r2 into dq2 by dt is equal to ds2 by dt this ds2 by dt i want to put here so put equation number 9 in equation number 10 Sorry, put equation number 10 in equation number 9. So you will get here q1 minus q2 is equal to a2 into r2 into dqt by dt. This is your equation number 11. Now, what is the next step? Same as we have considered for the upper time, consider the steady state. Now, always at steady state, the accumulation is constant or accumulation is zero. So q1 at steady state value of q1 is q1 of s minus q2 of s is equal to constant means 0, this is your equation number 12. The next step you know better, subtracting equation number 12 from equation number 11. So, 11 minus equation number 12, you will get here q1 minus q1 minus q1 of s minus q2 minus q2 of s is equal to a2 r2 into d by dt of q2 minus this steady state q2 of s. This is your equation number 13. What is the next step? The next step is same. Again, introducing the deviation variable means how much the variable is away from the steady state. So, I will consider Q capital Q1 as the deviation variable and that is equal to Q1 minus Q1 of S and Q2 is equal to Q2 minus Q2 of S. I will put these values of deviation variables into equation number 13. So, when I will put this into equation number 13, the equation will be converted into the derivative short form that is capital Q1 minus capital Q2 is equal to A2 into R2 into dQt by dt your equation number 14. So I know that now A2 into R2, A2 is the capacitance and R2 is the resistance. So product of the resistance into capacitance is nothing but the time constant. So I will rather than put here A2 into R2 is equal to tau 2 and equation 14 will be reduces to the equation number 15 that is Q1 minus Q2 is equal to tau 2 into dQt by dt. This is the equation number 15. And what is the next step? We have to take the Laplace transform. Some of the equation number 15 we get here. Taking Laplace transform equation 15, we get Laplace transform of Q1 is Q1 of S minus Laplace transform of Q2 is Q2 of S is equal to tau 2 into Laplace transform of dQ2 by dt is S into Q2 of S. Therefore, Q1 of S is equal to taking Q2 common 1 plus tau 2 of S. Or you can say that Q2 of S divided by Q1 of S is equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 2 of S. So also it, uh, it also seems that the transfer function of the lower time is also a first order reflection, first order control system. That is Q2 of S divided by Q1 of S is equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 2 of S and this is equation number 60, the most important equation. So from equation number 8, what we get? We get G1, the transfer function of the first tank is equal to Q1 of S divided by Q0 of S is equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 1 of S. We got this from equation number 8. And from, for the lower tank, we got from equation number 16, that is G2 of S, G2 of S is equal to Q2 of S divided by Q1 of S, that is equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 2 of S, equation number 16. Now suppose that now I want to determine the overall transfer function. I want to determine the overall transfer function of the system. So the overall transfer function of the system consider that it is GS overall. So that is G1 of S into G2 of S. That is Q1 of S divided by Q0 of S multiplied by Q2 of S divided by Q1 of S is equal to product of these two transfer function that is 1 upon 1 plus tau 1 of S into 1 upon 1 plus tau 2 of S. Here you can see that this Q1 of S will be get cancelled with this Q1 of S and finally you will get the GS overall is equal to Q2 of S divided by Q0 of S is equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 1 of S into 1 plus tau 2 of S. Now let us see what you got from this derivation. There were two times arrayed in a series and this is the overall transfer function you got. But the overall transfer function you got in this form that is the outlet of the last time that is q2 of s divided by inlet of the first time so gs overall is the outlet of the last time means time number 2 to the inlet of the time number 1 that is q0 of s that is nothing but <coughs> the product of the individual transfer function of each and every time that is 1 upon tau 1 of s into 1 upon tau 1 plus tau 2 of s 
Now consider that there are n number of the first order systems are arranged in the series. Consider that there are hundred times are arranged in the series. And you want to determine the overall transfer function of this particular first order system. Now these are the multi capacity control systems arranged in the series. Now what can you guess the what is the transfer function? Overall transfer function? Yes. GS overall will be equal to the outlet. Let us see here. The outlet of the hundredth tank. Outlet of the hundred tank divided by inlet of the first tank. That will be the GS overall and that will be equal to 1 upon 1 plus tau 1 of years into 1 upon 1 plus tau 2 of years into 1 plus 1. So up to so on 1 upon 1 plus tau n of years. Means the if there are n number of the first order systems are arranged in a series then its overall transfer function is nothing but the ratio of outlet of the last tank to the inlet of the first tank and that is equal to product of the individual transfer function of each and every first each and every control system or first order control system arranged in a non interacting manner so let us see here what i have done i have considered that there are n number of the systems are arranged in a series so these are the systems <coughs> consider that this is the input of for the first system x1 so the output of the first system is x2 like this tank q0 q1 then x2 is the will act as the input just like this, x2 will be act as input to the g2 and output will be g3. So similarly, n number of the systems are arranged in a series. So the last one is suppose xl is the input to the gn of s and output will be xl plus 1. So finally, gs overall will be as I told you the output of the last tank that is xn plus 1 divided by inlet of the first tank that is x1 and that is nothing but product of the individual transfer function of every non-interacting system that is g1 of years, g2 of years, up to so on g3 of years, g4 of years, up to so on gn of years. So in this particular lecture we have determined the transfer function of the non-interacting multi-capacity control system for two tank system and the transfer function is nothing but the ratio of the outlet of the last tank to the inlet of the first tank and that is nothing but the product of the individual transfer function. So if there are n number of the first order control systems are arranged in a non-interacting manner then you can say that the overall transfer function is the product of the individual transfer function of each and every transfer function. This is regarding to the today's lecture.